Sinbad Retold by Janet Hardy Gould Sinbad Chapter 1 Our story begins in old Baghdad. A rich old man is very ill in bed. He calls to his son, Sinbad. I'm dying, Sinbad, says the old man. You can have all my money, my son. But you must be careful with it. Please don't die, father, says Sinbad unhappily. Sinbad's father dies, and Sinbad is unhappy for a long time. But one day he thinks, I'm a very lucky man. I have a lot of money now, some beautiful things, and a big house. With his father's money, Sinbad buys new things to wear, and expensive things to eat from the market. <laughs> Every evening, Sinbad's friends come to his house. They eat. <coughs> and drink all night. But after a year, Sinbad has no more money. Every day, angry shopkeepers come to Sinbad's house. Where's our money? They ask angrily. Sinbad goes to the market, and he sells his father's best tables and chairs. With the money, he buys some beautiful carpets. I can sail to different countries, Sinbad thinks. And I can sell these carpets for a lot of money. Then I can give the money back to the shopkeepers. Next, Sinbad finds an old ship with a very old captain. Three days later, Sinbad is ready to leave Baghdad. He talks excitedly to all the sailors on the ship. I want to bring back a lot of money, he tells them. The ship sails away from Baghdad and out to sea. Sinbad begins to feel ill. After two days at sea, Sinbad is very ill. But then he sees a beautiful island. Please stop, he says to the captain. Sinbad and some of the sailors land on the island. Sinbad takes a barrel with him. He wants to look for water. The captain stays on the ship. Sinbad and the sailors are all very happy. What a wonderful island, says Sinbad. Let's sit down and make a fire. They sit near the fire and they begin to sing. Suddenly, the island moves. The island is moving, says Sinbad. This isn't an island, cry the sailors. It's a whale! Sinbad quickly gets into the barrel. The whale moves down 
into the water. All the sailors are now in the sea. Help! They cry. Now it is dark, and Sinbad is at sea in the barrel. Hello! Hello! He cries, but nobody answers. Chapter 2 The next morning, Sinbad looks out of the barrel. He is now alone on a small island. Far away, he can see a big white stone. He goes to the stone and he looks carefully at it. What's this? he thinks. Suddenly, the sky becomes black. Sinbad feels very afraid. Help! What's happening? He cries. He looks up at the sky. A very big bird is flying nearer and nearer. He begins to run away. Now I understand, he thinks. That bird is a rock, and that big white stone is a rock's egg. The rock sits on the egg, and then it goes to sleep. Sinbad takes off his turban, and he puts it around the rock's leg. When the rock flies away, I can leave the island too, he thinks. In the morning, the rock flies away. Sinbad flies up into the sky with the bird. The rock flies for hours and hours. In the end, it flies down into a valley and lands there. Sinbad finds lots of little stones in the valley. What are these? He thinks. I know! He cries. They're jewels! And he puts some of them in his bag. Then he hears a noise. There are three big snakes behind him. He runs away very fast. In front of him, he sees lots of dead animals in the valley. Oh no! The snakes kill everything here! He thinks. He goes behind one of the dead animals and he waits. Suddenly, a rock flies down and takes the dead animal up into the sky. Sinbad quickly puts his arms around the dead animal. He flies up into the sky with the rock. Where am I going now? He thinks. The rock flies out of the valley and it lands near a village. The men from the village run to see it and the rock flies away. Sinbad comes out from <laughs> under a dead animal. <sighs> Who are you? asked the men. I'm Sinbad the sailor says Sinbad. Would you like to buy these jewels from the valley? The men are surprised. Nobody goes into the valley, they say. The snakes eat everything there. Not me. <laughs> Laughs Sinbad. 
<laughs> You're very lucky, say the men. The people from the village buy Sinbad's jewels. He's a rich man now, and he wants to go back to Baghdad. We can find a ship for you, say the people from the village. In Baghdad, Sinbad gives money to the shopkeepers. Are you truly Sinbad? They ask. Yes, he says, and he tells them about his adventures. Chapter Three. Sinbad's friends come to visit him at his father's house, but there is nothing to eat or drink, and the house is dirty. His friends soon go away. I need more money, he thinks. Then I can have a beautiful house again. The next morning, Sinbad finds a ship and a captain. He buys lots of things at the market, and he puts them on the ship. He's ready to leave Baghdad again. After a week at sea, there is a big storm. Sinbad is ill, and he stays in bed. After the storm, the ship arrives at an island. That's the island of Zugab, says the captain. Sinbad is very excited. Perhaps I can sell my things to people on the island. He thinks. Sinbad. Explores the island with two of the sailors. They find lots of jewels there. Just then, a big wave hits the ship. The wave takes the ship far out to sea. Sinbad and the two sailors are very afraid, so they climb behind some big stones. When night comes, they go to sleep. In the morning, they find a big snake around them. The snake eats one of the sailors. Quickly, Sinbad and the second sailor climb a tree. They stay there all day and all night. When Sinbad wakes up in the morning, he's alone. Oh no! The second sailor is dead too. He thinks, and I'm the snake's next breakfast. Just then, Sinbad sees some wood near the tree. Sinbad climbs down the tree, and he makes some armor from the wood. Then he sees the snake. The snake is hungry. Sinbad stays in his armor all night. The snake moves around him, but it can't eat Sinbad. In the morning, Sinbad wakes up. Where's the snake? He thinks. The snake is sleeping in the sun, near the tree. Then, Sinbad sees a ship out at sea. I know that ship, he thinks. It's my old ship. Sinbad quietly climbs out of the armor, and quickly puts some jewels in his bag. Then. He runs to the sea. The snake wakes up and comes after Sinbad, but Sinbad 
runs faster and gets to the sea before the snake can eat him. Sinbad swims to the ship. It's Sinbad! cry the sailors. You're a very lucky man. We have all your beautiful carpets from Baghdad. Thank you, says Sinbad. The ship sails home. It stops at lots of different countries, and Sinbad sells all his carpets. When he arrives in Baghdad, he has a lot of money. Chapter 4 Sinbad's friends are very happy to see him. Sinbad tells them all about his adventures. But after some time, Sinbad is not happy in Baghdad. I want to go back to sea. He tells his friends. A week later, Sinbad leaves Baghdad on a big, tall ship. He's very excited. It's time for some more adventures, he tells the captain. The ship sails for three weeks, but one night there's a storm. The ship breaks here and there, and it must land. In the morning, the ship lands near a beach. Sinbad and some of the sailors go to find help. They meet some strange men on the beach. Hello. Can you help us? Sinbad asks them. But the strange men don't understand. Suddenly, the men take Sinbad and the sailors to their village. Sinbad is now very afraid. Oh no! They're cannibals! He thinks. The cannibals put the sailors and Sinbad in a cage. They give the sailors lots of good things to eat. The sailors are very hungry. Sinbad is hungry too, but he eats nothing. Soon the sailors are fat, and the cannibals are very hungry. That evening they take the fattest sailor and eat him. The next day, they take one more sailor. I must get out, thinks Sinbad. Sinbad is very thin, and he can get through the cage easily. That evening, when the cannibals eat their dinner, Sinbad runs away. The next morning, Sinbad arrives in a new country. He sees some people. Are they cannibals too? thinks Sinbad. But these people are not cannibals. They take Sinbad to their king. Sinbad tells the king about his wonderful adventures. The king listens carefully. You're a lucky man, he says. You can make us lucky too. You must marry my daughter, Aisha. When Sinbad sees Aisha's beautiful face, he falls in love with her at once. Sinbad marries Aisha 
in front of the king and all the people. A year after the wedding, Aisha becomes ill. A friend talks to Sinbad quietly. Be careful. When a woman dies in this country, they bury the husband with her, he says. What? cries Sinbad. Aisha becomes very ill, and in the end, she dies. The king buries Sinbad with Aisha. He also buries lots of jewels with them. Sinbad is now far under the ground. Sinbad waits to die. But suddenly, he sees an animal near him. It's a big, strange animal. Sinbad puts lots of jewels in his bag, and he quickly follows the animal through the ground. Chapter 5 When Sinbad comes out from under the ground, he meets some sailors. I'm Sinbad the sailor, he tells them. The sailors are surprised. Sinbad? But, but Sinbad, Sinbad is dead, they say. Well, <laughs> I'm not dead now, Sinbad says. And I want to meet your captain. The sailors take Sinbad to their ship. Are you Sinbad the sailor? Asks the captain. Yes, says Sinbad. Then sail with us and tell us about your adventures, says the captain. The ship sails for many weeks. One morning, the captain sees an island. Sinbad and some of the sailors land and begin to explore the island. The sailors find a very big bird's egg. Don't touch it, says Sinbad. It's a rock's egg. But the sailors throw stones at the egg. The egg breaks open, and a big, fat, young rock comes out. It makes a lot of noise. Suddenly, four angry rocks fly down. Let's go back to the ship, says Sinbad. The rocks begin to attack the ship with big stones. We must sail away now, cries the captain. The ship sails into a bad storm, and Sinbad lands in the sea. After many hours in the water, he climbs onto some big stones near a beach. Sinbad begins to explore. There are big black stones all around the beach and a big cave with a river in it. He finds the wrecks of old ships and hundreds of jewels on the beach. More jewels, says Sinbad, and he puts some of the beautiful stones in his bag. Soon, he begins to feel hungry. There are lots of jewels here, he thinks, but there's nothing to eat. 
I must look for something. But where? Sinbad takes wood from the wrecks and makes a boat from it. He puts the boat on the river in the cave and gets on it. He rows for days through the dark cave. He feels more and more hungry every day. After six days, he's very ill and tired. But then, he sees some blue sky. He can also see two strange men. Welcome to the country of Serendib. They say, Please give me something to eat, cries Sinbad. The men give Sinbad lots of different things, and he eats for hours. You're a lucky man, say the men. Come with us to see our king. Sinbad gives some of the jewels to the king. He also tells him about the most important man in Baghdad, the caliph. Your caliph is a very good and wise man, says the king. Here are some presents for him. The king finds a big ship for Sinbad, and he gives him lots of presents too. Sinbad sails back to Baghdad. On the ship, he thinks about his adventure in the cave. This time, I want to stay at home in Baghdad, he thinks. When Sinbad gives the presents to the Caliph of Baghdad, the Caliph says, I have some. Beautiful carpets for this wise king of Serendib. Please take them to him. Oh, no, thinks Sinbad. Back to sea again. Chapter 6 Sinbad sails from Baghdad with the presents for the king of Serendib. The king of Serendib is happy to see Sinbad again. Stay here, he says to Sinbad. And tell me more about the wise caliph of Baghdad. I'm sorry, says Sinbad. I must go back to Baghdad now. I'm tired of adventures. Sinbad begins to go home. One day, a sea monster attacks the ship. cries Sinbad. Not more adventures! The monster is angry. It eats some of the sailors from the ship. Quickly, Sinbad gets into a little boat and rows away. Sinbad lands on an island. He leaves his boat on the beach and goes to explore. Sinbad finds a cave. He can hear a noise. Someone's crying, he thinks. He looks into the cave and sees a young woman. In front of her, there's a monster. It is sleeping. She's the monster's prisoner thinks Sinbad. I must help her. 
Later, the monster leaves to look for something to eat. Sinbad goes into the cave. Who are you? Asks the woman. I'm Sinbad the Sailor. He says, "I can help you." Thank you. She says, "I'm Yasmin." Sinbad takes Yasmin to the boat on the beach. Can you row? Sinbad asks her. Of course I can. She says. Well, here's my boat. Let's row. Sinbad and Yasmin row all night. In the morning, Sinbad sees his ship. Sinbad and Yasmin climb up to the ship. Sinbad! The sailors cry. You're alive! Of course. <laughs> says Sinbad. And this is my friend. Yasmin. Just then, pirates attack the ship. The pirates make Sinbad and Yasmin their prisoners. The pirates take Sinbad and Yasmin to a new country and sell them to a man at the market. You must hunt elephants every day for their ivory. Says the man. Sinbad and Yasmin are very good at hunting elephants. One day, lots of elephants follow Sinbad and Yasmin. Yasmin is afraid. Why are those elephants following us? She asks. It's all right, says Sinbad. Elephants are very wise, you know. Perhaps they want to tell us something. Sinbad and Yasmin climb a tree. The elephants are walking into a cave. Let's go into that cave, says Sinbad. In the cave, Sinbad and Yasmin find lots of dead elephants. Look at all these dead elephants," says Sinbad. Sinbad takes the hunter to the dead elephants. The hunter is very happy. Thank you, Sinbad," he says. "Now we don't need to kill any elephants. We have lots of ivory here. You can go now," says the hunter. And he gives Sinbad and Yasmin a lot of money. Sinbad and Yasmin sail back to Baghdad. Yasmin is very excited. I want to meet all your friends, she says. Sinbad takes Yasmin to his house. Yasmin is surprised. You're very rich," she says. "But money isn't the most important thing," says Sinbad. "We must help people too." Sinbad then goes into the streets of Baghdad, and he gives some of his money to the people there, with no homes. Thank you, Sinbad. They cry. You're a truly wise and good man.